Hey friend, Chris Vandeviver here from WhyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Today I want to talk to you about low latency mode in Logic. This is such a crucial feature when you're working in really big sessions where you have lots of tracks, lots of instruments, plugins, routing, and you may find that pretty far along in your project that you need to get back in there and record, you know, one more vocal take, one more shaker take, or even a software instrument take. And what the problem soon becomes in a large session like that is you can't get your buffer size low enough to reduce latency without getting system overloads and audio dropouts. That's where low latency mode comes in. It really can be such a lifesaver in a big session. It can eradicate any plugins or routing that are causing latency in your project. But there are considerations, details, and nuances when it comes to low latency mode, which can be a bit of a struggle, a bit of a frustrating point for many users. So today I want to show you, number one, what low latency mode does and how it can help you. Number two, what some of those considerations and nuances are that you have to maybe deal with in a large session. And number three, some workarounds so you can use low latency mode without having to worry about some of the problems I'm going to illustrate. First things first, what is latency? Let's say you have a microphone set up and you have it plugged in directly to your audio interface. And you or a separate vocalist are going to be recording some vocals to, again, a big session with lots of tracks and routing. The moment you hit record and that vocalist sings the first note into the microphone, the time that it takes to go through the microphone, through your audio interface, through your Mac system, back out the interface to the headphones, to that performer, there could be a very audible delay. And that delay can be so distracting and it can be very hard to perform under those circumstances. Of course, the first line of defense when it comes to latency is we want to go right up to Logic Pro, go down to Preferences, and go to the Audio Preferences. And you really want to set your sights on the I.O. buffer size. I right now have it set to 1024, which is a perfect setting if you're just mixing or listening back to your session and you're not recording any live tracks or instruments. But the moment that you want to start recording instruments into a project, you want to set to a lower buffer size. 128 is usually a good starting point, You can try some of the smaller buffer sizes like 64 or 32 if you have a Mac system that's quite robust and also have an interface that takes advantage of some faster connection types like USB-C or Thunderbolt. So the lower the buffer size, the less latency, but the trade-off is the lower the buffer size, the more likely you might experience system overloads or dropouts. So it's a dance, it's a juggle, and you have to see what works best for your particular system. Another thing to set your sights on is the multi-threading option which there are two. Playback tracks is great when you're just listening back, just mixing, and you're not recording any live tracks. While playback and live tracks obviously is best if you're recording multiple software instruments, multiple live tracks at a time, as Logic will spread out the resources across various cores. For this video, I'm gonna set the buffer size to its biggest, 1024, multi-threading to playback tracks, and let's dig into it. At the moment in this project, I have an instance of Alchemy. And I've loaded a couple plugins, some routing, so we can start to explore low latency mode. So let's assume you have that huge project and you need to record into it and you can't get that buffer size any lower. You can't reduce the latency. That's where low latency mode comes in. You turn it on right up here in the control bar. looks like a speedometer. And if we take a look at our track here, we can see that some of the plugins and routing have been bypassed or have been grayed out. Low latency mode has a set threshold that you can adjust, and I'll explain that later in the video, as a set threshold of five milliseconds, and any plugins or routing that exceed that threshold will be bypassed to reduce the latency when you try to record. In this case, we have an adaptive limiter, and we have a send to space designer with the multipressor, and we can see some stuff is going on. So let me turn off low latency mode and just, you know, I'll play a chord on this alchemy patch. Now the adaptive limiter is boosting the signal by seven dB and we can even further exaggerate it just so we can really hear that boost. Now, if I turn on low latency mode, we won't hear the adaptive limiter and it's boost anymore. And it's dramatically quieter. If we hover our mouse over the adaptive limiter, we should get a pop-up that tells us the name of the plugin, any presets, and also how much latency it incurs. In this case, the latency is 20 milliseconds and it's directly related to the look ahead function on the adaptive limiter. So if I set this all the way to 200, hover again, we're gonna see that now the latency is 200 milliseconds, way above that five millisecond threshold. Whereas the channel EQ, if we hover over it, the latency is very minimal, 0.3 milliseconds. And it's also because the HQ option for oversampling is enabled. So if I turn that off, hover again, 
we have no latency value to report, which means only the plugins that introduce latency are what are bypassed on this particular channel strip. But we also have a reverb send as well. So let's check that out. Turn off low latency mode, turn on the reverb, and let's hear the reverb in the mix. Okay, so we have some reverb, but if I turn on low latency mode and I try to play again, now we've lost not only the adaptive limiter boost, but also the reverb. And yet again, it's because I've set, in this case, the multipressor look ahead function to 20 milliseconds. Not all plugins have a look ahead function, but it's just great for this demonstration. If we reduce the look ahead below the threshold of five milliseconds, check it out. Now we have a reverb, but not the adaptive limiter. Let's set the look ahead back to 20 milliseconds and I'm going to create a new bus and I'm gonna copy Space Designer to the second auxiliary channel strip. Now, check it out. We have two instances of Space Designer and only one has the multipressor on it. But nonetheless, when I try to play both of these reverbs with low latency mode enabled, we have neither of the reverbs. But if we remove the multipressor and give it another go, awesome. So we have both now, which means that latency inducing plugins on different auxiliary channel strips can affect the other auxiliary channel strips. And if we now copy the adaptive limiter to the stereo output, we should still have that gain boost if I turn off low latency mode. But if I turn on low latency mode, check it out. When I enable low latency mode, we're gonna lose the reverbs and our track is even going to skip any of the processing on the stereo output. I bet you're already figuring out if you have a large session with lots of plugins and routing and stuff going on, some stuff on the stereo output that maybe is creating latency. It can really make a mess of your session when you're trying to record into that session. In the last piece I wanna show you, I'm gonna set the output of our track to a bus and I'll copy the adaptive limiter to that output, and I'm gonna boost the gain plugin here. And when low latency mode is enabled, we're going to receive no reverb. We're also going to receive no adaptive limiter on this output here, but we will get the gain boost on the stereo output because the stereo output is now back in the mix. And if you look at the adaptive limiter, we see nothing on the meters. One misconception when it comes to low latency mode, it's easy to assume that any sends that you route to a direct output on your audio interface, in my case, we're gonna set this to three, four, which would be my headphone output for a headphone mix. It's easy to assume that because all of these sends are grayed out, that none of them are sending audio, but that's not true. If I play the same chord, we're actually going to see on the headphone output, some audio passing through which means that any headphone mixes you have set up will still receive audio. It's only the sends that are sending to parallel effects like reverb, delay, parallel compression, etc. In a nutshell, any plugins on the channel strip itself will be bypassed, but not all of the plugins. Any sends or auxiliary channel strips that have latency inducing plugins will be bypassed and all of the sends will be bypassed, but not any sends sending to a direct output on your audio interface. And any plugins on the stereo output that introduce latency will cause your tracks to completely avoid the stereo output processing. At this moment, it kind of seems like low latency mode isn't that great, right? How do we work around these problems of gain staging and these problems of send effects? Well, number one, the best way to avoid any sort of problems with low latency mode is just to avoid latency inducing plugins to begin with. Now I know that's way easier said than done, but luckily many of the plugins in Logic don't incur any sort of latency. There's really just a select few. Number two, you could adjust the threshold for low latency mode by going to Logic Pro, going to Preferences, Audio, under the General tab here. And right here, we have a slider to set the limit for low latency mode. And we can also turn it off and on from these preferences. Now check it out. If we move the adaptive limiter back to that track, we can remind ourselves we have 20 milliseconds of latency. And if we start to adjust the threshold, check it out we'll reintroduce the adaptive limiter because we've set the limit above that of the latency that the adaptive limiter introduces. So you could play with this threshold and try to find something that works best for your particular situation. But of course, the higher the limit, the more latency you're bringing back to your project because we're not 
omitting everything that causes latency. I'm going to set that back to the default of five milliseconds. The third solution works really well for sends. Right now we have low latency mode enabled. If you go right here to your sends and click on them, we should now have an option called low latency safe. And what low latency safe does when we enable it, now our send is not removed from the signal path for this track. We now have that reverb back in the mix. And we could do the same thing for our second reverb send. And even to our headphone mix. If we decided to add an adaptive limiter and maybe boost the signal considerably, boost the look ahead considerably, check it out. We can see that it's sending with the adaptive limiter regardless of the latency it brings to the table. But I think there's another road you can take. It takes a little bit of routing, but really can fix a lot of these issues related to low latency mode. Let's check out another Logic project where I'm going to record some guitar into that project. Okay, in this Logic project, I'm gonna show you what I think is potentially the best workaround when dealing with low latency mode. All the tracks in this session comes from one of the starter grids that comes with Logic. If we just open the Live Loops grid, we can see that I've dragged everything into the main tracks area. I have a guitar patch all set up and ready to go here, but when I try to play my guitar, I'm getting latency. Let's check it out. I'm recording the direct signal and the output so you can hear it. And it's pretty significant because I've added a ton of plugins on the stereo output, adding a lot of look ahead to create a lot of latency. If we look at the audio preferences, I have the IO buffer size to 1024, even have multi-threading to playback tracks. Of course, I could turn on low latency mode, but then we're gonna get that drop in volume. And that's just not gonna work for this session. In this case, what I suggest, let's go to the mixer and we're going to select every track in this session including auxiliary channel strips for any reverb or delay effects, but I'm not going to select the guitar track that I'm recording to or the guitar reverb that I have set up either. And I'm gonna set the output to a new bus, bus 31. And we're gonna call this bus Submix. What this allows us to do is take all these plugins on the stereo output and remove them from the signal path of our guitar that we're recording. For some audio interfaces, just moving everything off of that stereo output to a submix channel is enough to remove the latency in the signal path. For my Thunderbolt interface, this is enough. But for my USB interface, it's not enough. You might also see any parallel effects also get removed from the signal path. In that case, I'm gonna turn on low latency mode, set my reverb to low latency safe. We can also see some of the reverbs for the piano here have been adjusted, so let's set those to low latency safe as well. And now we should be in the clear to record this guitar track latency free. Our gain staging shouldn't be a mess because we moved all the plugins off the stereo output to a separate submix, but our guitar is still routed to the stereo output. We set the necessary send effects to low latency safe and we have low latency mode enabled. I'm now going to try recording to this riff. And just like that, our gain staging is A-OK. -okay. All of our effect sends are A-OK. -okay. We're able to take advantage of the large buffer size. And with low latency mode, we're experiencing no latency in the signal path. So I hope that was helpful for you. If it was, as always, I highly recommend subscribing to the YouTube channel, YLogic Pro Rules, or subscribing on the website itself, YLogicProRules.com. Every week, I'm posting new videos, new emails, and posts to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Thanks so much.